Hello and welcome to Tinkertube's lab. It's Christmas time again, so it is the time to decorate your home with these fancy looking light fixtures, these fairy lights. And I come to the conclusion that those powered by solar cells are often quite a bit cheaper than those powered by USB or a 5 volt power supply wall ward or something like this. So I thought about it. How could we convert this to something more useful like wherever I put the USB lead? However, I already did a conversion of one of those and it worked out really well. And all you need is basically soldering iron and a spare USB lead which I have put somewhere. Let's just let me find that. Okay, I found the lead. <laughs> I use it to charge my hot glue gun right now. Okay, so <laughs> that is sorted. Wonderful. Let's uh, charge a bit more since we are potentially going to use that. So, at first we should take a look inside this. So the first thing we're going to do is open that thing up. Oh, by the way, um, you can imagine why I would like to turn this to a USB power device since uh, solar power on your Christmas tree, I don't think that will work. So let me just demonstrate this to you. Well, oh, it's one of the colored ones. Wonderful. Let me just switch the lights off for you. As you can see, we have some weird looking light effects which is the reason that we can't just put this oh this is going on my nerves stop it that's okay um this is the reason why we can't just uh, cut the wires and uh, solder our usb lead right onto it so we have to find a solution for that by the way this solution is uh, keeping this light effect function intact, so you will still be able to switch the lighting pattern if you want to. I personally don't like that. I much prefer it to stay just at a full-on version, but this is the easy way to convert it. It's just totally simple. So I will show you that and maybe in a later video we could work out some kind of circuit that let us use this in a just stationary way. So inside the unit we have a little printed circuit board with some unknown chip. It is marked ANA6518. I already looked up this one and I didn't find anything suitable, so, well, at least not in any language I can understand. And this is the regular 4-pin solar, uh, solar single AA charger IC thing that you find in many devices like solar garden lamps and stuff like this. So you can keep this IC and most of the surrounding parts and reuse this uh, solar cell and the battery and as I said most of the circuit for some purpose if you have a purpose I don't know I can think about maybe just have a standalone uh, sensor for example that is powered by the solar energy that you can leave outside and oh, I don't know measure the humidity and transmit it wirelessly over a ESP whatever that chip is called, I don't know. Um, could be a quite neat project, so you should definitely keep those solar cells and most of these surrounding components. What we are interested in now is this IC here, this ANA whatever it is called, and potentially this little 
uh, cap, a diode and the switch for the modes. So let me just unhook this stuff. First I'm cutting those wires and no they have no polarity as we will see when I reverse engineer the circuit. So this is the circuit of this whole module which is actually quite simple. Basically we have this YX8052 IC which I guess is some kind of charge controller and charge pump or uh, step up converter. Well it's uh, some specialized IC which you can find in most of those solar garden lights. However it gets uh, the solar light at its input at pin 1. Um, the, solar light, the solar cell I mean. Uh, pin 2 is connected over this power switch to the uh, battery, which is a single AA battery, 1.2 volt re rechargeable nickel metal hydrate, 600 milliamps. So, <laughs> not very big, but hey, it works. Um, pin 3 is ground, and pin 4 is the output. There's an inductor over to pin 2, and we have a little capacitor of 47 microfarad and a uh, reverse polarity protection diode at the output which goes directly to the input of this ANA6518 controller IC. Pin 1, 2 and 7 is not used at this circuit as you can see right here. There are, I'll show it to you a bit, I guess you can see it. There are three pins that are not really connected to anything. That is pin 1, 2 and 7. Pin 3 is ground and at pin 8 we have just this little mode switch. There's this small clicky button here. It's just connecting pin 8 to ground when you want to switch the mode. Pin 5 and 6 are the outputs and as you can see uh, those are the LEDs one LED parallel to the next one and as you can see they are in some kind of reverse polarity pattern so if this pin goes high and this pin goes low those LEDs will light and if it changes polarity 6 goes high 5 goes low the corresponding other LEDs will light which will make up in some kind of funky pattern which I personally don't like but hey, maybe I need it someday. So, let's get on to the whole thing. So, this PCB is attached with those small plastic melt things. And we should just unsolder this IC. If you like, you can solder the capacitor and a diode. I, for myself, use uh, external components I have flying around, as I will use this circuit for, as I said, a little external sensor or something like this. So let's switch on the soldering iron. Get a little additional solder onto the pins. And just unsolder this. I see. It is quite helpful if you have a small flat screwdriver that you can shove under there to just kind of give it a bit of tension while you heat the outmost pin and just bend it upwards a bit so you have room to stick it even further down, heat those pins and it should pop out quite soon. And there we have it. So, put that aside. First thing I want to do is take the IC and break some pins off. As we don't need pins number one, two and seven, I am getting rid of those just because I can. No, mainly because I don't want them to 
shot out at any circumstance as we are going to build this in some kind of uh, rat's nest or dead bug style configuration so I'm just bending those three pins that are not used and if you remember you count pins on an IC if you see this notch there whoop, this is uh, the top side and at the top left there's pin one two three four and in a horseshoe pattern we go over there and have five six seven and eight so one and two is already done i guess seven was yes seven was the last one that has to go just wiggle it a few times and it will break off so the other pins i'm going to bend outwards hoping that they don't break off which would be a bit of a shame as i really like the appearance of those uh, led strings oh and by the way this ic operates at a voltage of around 3.9 volts this xy uh, 8052 outputs around 4 volts um, so keep that in mind you can't connect it directly to the 5 volt of your USB uh, it will fry the chip I already tried it don't try it uh, add one single diode just in series to the input and you're good to go that works a treat I have tried it and it is working for oh, don't make me lie it's I guess it's around working for three or four months now so that's perfectly fine. Let me just get one small capacitor, which is not really needed, so you can just go with your USB straight to the input, but I prefer to add a small cap at the input just to give it a bit more stability, as those ICs are really sensitive. If there's any slight voltage drop, it will change modes. And as I prefer to have it at one mode and have it stay there, I add another capacitor. So, one moment, please. So, here is my cap. It's a bit overrated at 35 volts, but hey, let's cut that to size. And I'm also going to trim the pins just a bit so that they don't have any sharp edges. As I said, I'm going to encapsulate that in uh, some heat shrink, so I don't want the pins to puncture the heat shrink tubing. Next, we are going to get our third hand and just clip that into there and tin the pins. Clean this and we insert it. Pin 3 is ground, so the dotted line on the capacitor goes to pin 3, so like that. Next, I'm going to add the switch. You can salvage the mode switch from this module, but I prefer to have a shorter contact as this, uh, well, it's really long. I don't want it to protrude that far. So I take a generic push button switch. It is a nice incident that the switch snaps onto the IC quite well. As you can see, it's some kind of carrying the switch. But as you see, we are shorting some pins. So I will again break off pins that are not used this time from the switch and it is just the two opposite pins which side doesn't matter so we are left with something like this this clips onto there it's now a bit loose but you see it's working solder that to there and we have our switch connected. See, it's pretty tight on there. 
I will trim the axis of this pin so there's no way that this can short to anything. And the last thing I'm going to solder right onto the chip is, apart from the LEDs, a diode. As I said, the IC expects a voltage of around um, around 4 volts, so we can go away when we use our USB charger which outputs 5 volt and puts a single diode in series, which drops around 0.6 volts. So I'm just taking the diode, bending the lead like this so I can easily attach it to the IC. And now I'm just soldering it to the positive pin, which is pin number four. That was hot. But it's onto there. You see, now we are just adjusting that a bit, that it is firmly pressing against the capacitor. Clip the other side of the diode to an appropriate length. Tin it. And next we need our USB lead. So you are done charging, I just decided. Clip off the micro USB side. So I will just attach the blackish wire to the negative side and the positive wire to the diode. Now we want to connect, oh wait, maybe I should just zoom in a bit. Shouldn't I? I should have done this from the beginning on. But hey, at least you can see how I connect the LEDs. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, connect, well, that didn't work. That worked halfway. That's okay. So, as I said, no polarity, just attach it how it works out. That is a bit much solder. And that should be done. So now start the hot glue gun, which we are going to need in a few minutes. Take a bit of heat shrink and cut it roughly to size. So I would suggest like uh, five millimeters longer than the whole assembly. And don't forget to cut a small hole where the switch is supposed to be. That would be like here. I'm just moving the screwdriver over there and puncturing a hole for the switch. Feed it over the connector. So now the tube is over. We can slide it over here. Over the IC arrangement. So that is here. And 
And before I shrink this, I should actually try it, I guess. So just let me unwrap this so that you can see if it works when I plug this in right now. So let's see. As you see, it is working. Let me switch this off again for you. And if I press the button, it is switching through the modes. It's also quite bright, which is nice. There is my favorite mode of all those. Okay. Now all that is left to do is just take your appropriate heating tool and seal that heat shrink tubing. I prefer to shrink it a bit around the IC and the switch first. And when that is done, I take my hot glue gun, have a pair of uh, pliers ready. As I'm going to squeeze an, an amount in there, doing that will, as you can expect, uh, the heat shrink tubing will compress. And I like to just squeeze the whole thing to give it a tight seal. So let's just do this. As you can see, it's compressing. I'm just squeezing it a bit. And when it's colder, I can just uh, release the, pli uh, the, the, the pliers, tweezers, whatever, that thing. And it will stay in a compressed way so that there should be a tight fit between the cables and the glue. So there shouldn't be any way that it can wiggle loose. Or... So I guess it glued pretty, pretty nice. Yes, it did. It's still a bit soft, that's good. So, and while it's still a bit soft, we can peel off the overhang. And as you can see, that is pretty nicely sealed in there and it's not moving in any way. I'm just heating the excess hot glue a bit, that it just looks a bit nicer if there would be any gas left inside. That's potentially not the right way to do it. Mm, no. Just making the excess hot glue a bit more tidy. So, same goes for the other side, just squeeze an amount of hot glue in there and again making a nice tight seal at the place where the cable is coming out. And that's it. Doesn't look pretty but it works a treat works really well and as I said I have, have one of those running for some month and it's just very nice. And as I said those solar fairy lights are really much cheaper especially now in the winter time uh, compared to the 5 volt or USB fairy lights so it is a convenient way to convert them to USB or any 5 volt supply will work. So that's all for this episode of Tika Tubes Lab. If you liked the video, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments down below. And as always, I hope to see you the next time back here at Tika Tubes Lab. Until then, goodbye.